Welcome to Mike's on Mike, a conversation about politics, government, and Jacksonville. Join 50-year opinion leaders Mike Hightower, Mike Tolbert, and award-winning broadcaster and longtime political observer Mike Miller. Welcome to another edition of Mike's on Mike. Thank you very much for joining us. And once again this week, we're going to feature our special guest, Tim Gilmore, who's written and published a book called The Culture Wars of War and Folks, uh, which was chronicling the life in the times and perhaps Jacksonville's most public and outrageous racist and anti-Semite, and and that's War and Folks. Uh, Tim is an author of 22 books, he has a PhD, uh, and a professor of teaching writing at Florida State in, uh, College at Jacksonville. And Tim, once again, thank you for doing the second show with us. We appreciate it very much. Welcome thrilled, back. thrilled to be here. Thank you. And um, once again, real quickly, because we did this in the first show, but just tell us who Warren Folks was. Yeah. Uh, Warren Folks was, um, as you said, um, Jacksonville's, maybe Florida's uh, for for quite a while, um, most visible, self-avowed white supremacist who um, kept himself in the headlines for, for decades by um, running for office, um, suing people, <laughs> uh, uh, and moving from one kind of public conspiracy theory campaign to another. Okay. Mike? Yeah, you know, I, I know that you and Rodney Hurst, who is a, a, a civil rights leader and also a writer and author and historian himself, uh, are really good friends. And I know that Rodney had a relationship with folks. Uh, would you describe that, and especially as it involves Channel 7, when Rodney was there with the feedback, was a host of feedback? Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, so this was, um, um, I'm trying to remember the exact, I'm, th- I'm thinking late 60s. Um, and uh, Warren folks wanted to, be, uh, wanted to be on the show to talk about his organization, uh, or well, not his, but an organization that he was, was um, helping out with at the time called the White Cross instead of the Red Cross. Um, that would help white people um, during, uh, you know, the aftermath of, of, of a hurricane. And um, he, uh, his stipulation, and he did, he did this kind of thing uh, a number of times, his stipulation was that he would come on the show, but he wouldn't talk to, and he used some, you know, really ugly language to uh, describe uh, Rodney. And... Um, <laughs> He also said that he wouldn't talk to any any Jews, and the person who was taking his phone call said, well, you're talking to a Jew right now, <laughs> and also there are plenty of other Jews working here, too. So, That's um, when you thought it was safe to go in the water, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> They're everywhere. So he, God! So he, uh, so he never went on that show. Um, Rodney's uh, sister... Uh, remembered Warren Folks because he would stand outside of his barber shop, which was near um, the Seminole Hotel downtown. And um, her father uh, worked at the Seminole Hotel, uh, and uh, he was very um, fair skinned, Rodney says. Uh, and um, his sister Joan is, is, is darker complexioned. And uh, so. Uh, so Warren folks uh, would see them meet, and it looked like uh, a white man hugging a, 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 a black girl and was horribly offensive to, to folks. But I think the really most interesting thing is that uh, Rodney Hurst was at a commemoration for Axe Handle Saturday at um, Bethel Baptist Church. Um, I think it was the I think it was the fortieth. Um, 2007. Okay. Oh, okay. Is it 2007? Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, Warren folks shows up and, uh, you know, the way I kind of picture it, I was not there, but I kind of picture it like the Red Sea partying or something. I hope that's not blasphemous or anything. Um, but Warren folks shows up and, uh, uh, heads up to Rodney Hurst, who is, um, you know, uh, um, kind of presiding at the moment. Uh, and he calls um, Hurst his friend and sticks his hand out to shake his hand. And I, I'm i thinking all the ways that could go. And Rodney Hurst says, you know, that um, it, it, it wasn't um, available to him to know what was in Warren Folks's head and heart. So he reached out his hand and they shook hands. Really 
strange moment. <laughs> but uh, Rodney actually has a, there's a chapter in his book, it was never about a hot dog and a right. coat. And the chapter is called Warren Folks. And it has a picture of Warren uh, Folks holding uh, holding up a sign, um, you know, with the, the, the N-word um, on the sign. And uh, so uh, Rodney will jokingly call Warren Folks, you know, our friend sometimes. Um <laughs> Can you imagine what happened in the church when that happened? I mean, the intake of breath, the people oh, thought the, the end of the world is here. I, I, well, the fact that he had the presence of mind to say that. I, 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 yeah. yeah, you know, I, given what you said on, pod, on our first episode, and now then, and we've talked about his, what, what was his relationship hmm. with his family? What, hmm. or who, what, uh, did he have a family? Let me first. Mm-hmm. And two, what was that? Re- if there was a family, what was that relationship like? Because my understanding at the end of the, don't want to go all this, but right. he, as you have pointed out, he really kind of died this almost homeless recluse that nobody. So I, I, I don't want to mm-hmm. get it into the book, but where, what was was there a family, and what was that mm-hmm. relationship like? You know, every now and then. Uh, in letters that he wrote. He wrote these vo- voluminous, um, rambling letters, and they would sometimes they would be um, um, single-spaced on legal size paper, and then he would write all in the margins around the corners. And, um, and in some of these things, uh, every now and then, there would be some mention of his being a father. And I would, you know, I'm reading this when I'm trying to learn who this guy is, and first of all, I'm thinking, I can't imagine this guy being a father. But then I'm obviously wondering to whom, you know, where, where, where are these, these, these kids? Um, there's one, one of his um, weird um, paid ads that he took out in the newspaper, um, which he, <laughs> he wrote to look like they were news stories. Um, and they would have a little headline. Um, but they would praise him the whole time and talk about what a great patriot he was and so on. Um, one of the end of them, uh, he's, he says, uh, um, Crystal, got your letter the other day. Um, thanks. Love you or something like that. Hmm. And I'm like, Crystal? Who is Crystal? I still honestly don't know who Crystal is. I could not. I couldn't find out. <laughs> so he did. He did have a family. Well, he did. Yeah. So, um so I found um, after I had found out most of what most of, of, of his time here in Jacksonville, um, I found some backstory of him in Orlando. Uh, he uh, he had been married. He did have two daughters. Um, <clears throat> um, trying to think of what I want to say or not say. Are they still around? I will say that I spoke to both of his daughters. Okay. They they live on the opposite side of the country. And um, it seems that um, the U.S. Navy actually helped his, um, his by that time, former wife and daughters um, move away from Florida. Um, he, uh, he, I'll say that he harassed. Uh, he did not believe that um, divorce was possible. So she, you know, they, they, she, she divorced him. But he thought that in the eyes of God, once you're married, you're always married. Uh, and uh, he, um, for his daughters, uh, I think their, their, their whole lives, he was kind of a specter that haunted them. Sometimes he would show up. Sometimes he would show up on their doorstep when they were adults. Uh, and God, um, <laughs> yeah, I, the terror. Uh-huh. Right, right. I right. mean, really, when you... Truly, absolutely, yeah, yeah. A lot of what uh, folks did in his life is almost comical. Yeah. Give us a, an idea of what the strangest or funniest thing is that you discovered in writing the book. Yeah. Uh, and, and, Comic and him, th- those no, words, don't right. go to, don't, they don't seem to be in the good and, and the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me address that real quickly. Um, so uh, that, you're right about that. Because um, he was um, kind of a quixotic character sometimes. Um, uh, so, so I, I wanted to, you know, I, I wrestled with in writing this um, 
the tone because I don't ever want it to seem like I'm making light of anything that he did that was was hateful or um, that um, you know that that caused other people suffering. All right, uh, but uh, he did some just some of the things that he did were so ridiculous. There's no other way to put it. Here's an example. Um, he uh, he had joined. Um, a church in the uh, late 70s called the Woodstock Park Church of Christ. Um, they, uh, he, he made them miserable. Um, they, um, the, the, the board, the church board got together and decided um, to oust him, right? So revoke his membership and um, tell him that, you know, he was, he was, he was barred from coming back on the premises. I mean, this is a church doing that, right? <laughs> this is a, <laughs> the idea of sanctuary, you know? Um, so his response uh, was to, um, to sue the church and uh, he demand, and he referred to the, the board, uh, which was the, the pastor, um, John Adams and uh, an 18 member board. He referred to them as Adams and his 18 member majority faction. It was unanimous, but that's what he called them. Um, he, uh, he insisted, uh, and he would, he would write them and use phrases like by high noon and things like that. Uh, he insisted that um, he, he meet with the board in front of the church uh, and uh, that they issue him an apology um, that that the pastor shake his hands and um, after shaking his hand um, instantly um, resign as pastor of the church and then um, give Warren folks a, uh, a a a portion of the the church property for his own use so um, <laughs> When you we call that chutzpah. <laughs> when you're reading things like that, I mean, there there are moments where it is so it's it's so brazen, but also so absurd that you you almost laugh at you do you laugh yeah, out loud. You have to laugh. There was a there was a there was once when he was uh, he was protesting at NAS Jacks where he disrupted a um, a flag raising ceremony. And um, this kind and, and if you can picture him, he always wore this this Homburg uh, and yeah. this this suit, uh, and um, that seemed too big for him. By the yeah. way, if you remember the <laughs> yeah, shoulder the true. shoulder pads the shoulder uh, that's what I remember. Oh, uh-huh. The shoulder pads were way out here. Ah, okay, uh huh, uh huh. So, so this this um, this slow motion um, chase across base ensues, and it's described in in um, you know it was described in, in court in great detail, and it sounds like uh, something from again Monty Python or something. Um, there was a. a um, a security vehicle that was was chasing him. He was on foot, uh, and he he made a sudden turn in front of the vehicle, and the vehicle almost pinned him against a tree. And so there are these these very weird, um, almost like something out of Don Quixote or something um, moments that um, I think you can find some humor in, you know, uh, and um, maybe even um, some, is a great German word, Schadenfreude, which is you know um, delight in someone else's um, misfortune. <laughs> uh, you feel that <laughs> a number of times, and sometimes I think uh, you know the greatest satire is realism. Yeah. Right. So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, having a laugh at his expense in episodes like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We. Um we occasionally, depending on the guest, mm. and you're perfect for this. <laughs> oh boy. Do a lightning round. Uh huh. I've heard this uh, is this is yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you heard it before? Okay. As you know, then, and for those it's that a have new not board, seen it before, it's a new it's a new board game. Yeah. Is. <laughs> this is instead of our mailbag, folks. We, <laughs> we don't have a mailbag um, because the mail's too slow. We'd never be able to read it on the air. Uh, but we're going to come up with some um, some topics, and if you just take thirty seconds, just to give okay. us your impressions, it's almost like you know. Okay, I feel right. like I feel like I'm defending my uh, dissertation or something here. No, <laughs> we're just trying. We're trying to get. Yeah, no, I got we're it. We're trying I'm to ready. get Tim Gilmore unplugged. Mm, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, uh, I'll start. Yep. Professional barbershop. 
Uh, this was uh, one of the names for his his barber shop, uh, and it was the center of his operations. He, it was also at times called the Dixie Barber Shop, or once it was just Warren's Barber Shop. Uh, and uh, it appeared in, uh, and he appeared in it in in Life Magazine in 1965. Wow. Uh, and he was there with some of the people who had actually bombed um, Donald Godfrey's house. Donald Godfrey was um, a first grader who attended. He was the first black child at Lackawanna Elementary School in Jacksonville. Oh God! So um, that's the professional barber shop. Okay. Uh, UPI report mentioning folks in September of 1960. I think this is the first um, report where his his political activities are, are reported nationally, and he and some other members of the National States Rights Party are <clears throat> protesting uh, Nikita Khrushchev's uh, visit to the UN, and they're in James Weldon Johnson Park, then, of course, called Hemming Park, uh, in the center of town, and he has this uh, most ridiculous um, uh, uh, picket sign that said something like, "With, with um, all K, the words all started with K." Um, Khrushchev creates Cuban Congo chaos. I don't know who, who that was supposed to convince of what exactly, but um, that was that was the earliest. So that was um, right about the time that he came into town. J. Lucky Stoner? us. I'm, I'm Lucky sure. us. <laughs> yeah. J.B. Stoner and George Stallings. Oh. Uh, <laughs> both um, white supremacist attorneys. Um, J.B. Stoner uh, was, um, was, was involved with the National States Rights Party. Uh, and, uh, I mean, most significantly, he was the Klan's attorney, and he uh, defended the murder of Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. Um, um the other person was a Jacksonville lawyer who was elected to the Florida House of Representatives yes. for a number of years. Okay. Sure was. My turn. The back of his business card, hmm. Mayor Lou Ritter. No, no. Those are two separate. Oh, two sorry. separate questions. Okay. All right. All right. First of all, I'm sorry. I'm going. To That's that. okay. I'm trying trying to think of how to creatively. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that. that one together. I, no, no. I, but he he he, he produced <laughs> business cards everywhere he went. Yes, he did. Everything he did. Yeah, and on yeah. the back of those business yeah. cards, he always had something mm-hmm. with. Tell us about that. Oh man. Well, uh, probably the least offensive thing he had on his. I was afraid you were going to bring business, that business card was this this ridiculous um, poem about um, un- how to understand women, which I won't go into. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> he also had um, he had a, a, a list of um, the kinds of people who should not visit his barber shop and the kinds of people who should. And uh, the kinds of people who should not were, you know, in his words, um, inward loving socialist liberals, unless they wanted to uh, chance a slip of the razor and have their throat slit. Oh Said that oh. on his business card. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Mayor Lou Ritter. Mayor Lou Ritter. So took a totally different attack than um, Hayden Burns had on um, segregation in Jacksonville, put um, black police officers on the streets. Uh, and uh, so uh, so he, for a while, was Warren Folks' nemesis. Uh, folks protested um, black police officers, period, uh, especially being in what he called the white downtown area, and it was segregated at the time. Um, and also um, someone that uh, folks appealed to directly to try to get a gun permit. <laughs> Back to our discussion from the, the earlier show, he, right. he could not get a gun permit for the longest time, but he, that never stopped him from having guns. What about Judge John Santora? Oh, gosh. John Santora. So Santora, um, first of all, uh, early on, uh, wrote a regular column in um, the Jacksonville Chronicle. Uh, I didn't know that. He did. And it was kind of like, you know, here are my, wow. here are my wise, you know, King Solomon rulings from the week. Um, but he is, um, he, he features most prominently in the book because in... Uh, um, after Christmas, was it 91, I think, he uh, gave an interview to the Times Union in which he said a number of things um, that were, were, were really offensive uh, about race. 
Uh, and so, um, so there was this big outcry to have uh, Santora removed from the bench. Jesse Jackson came to town a couple of times. Uh, Warren folks um, supported Santora. Um, although <laughs> Santora earlier had ruled against Warren Folks uh, a number of times, but he supported Santora at, at the moment. And there's actually a really kind of fascinating thing that happens. Um, uh, Bob Ingram, who was a um, civil rights activist, uh, was, uh, was protesting Santora. And there was a moment where Ingram um, waved Folks over and got in front of a uh, Times Union photographer and put his arm around Folks and... Um, uh, they had a long history together. Mm. Folks at one point said that um, Ingram had tried to kill him, which was total nonsense, and ended up saying, "Actually, Ingram saved my life a couple of times when he would probably go, did when he would go into La Villa and um, you know burn effigies of Martin Luther King in the middle of a black neighborhood and things like that." See, Ingram was a big guy. He yeah. was yeah. right. Yeah, he had what six he four. Really I guy. remember him. He he was about two Warren folks. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah, at least two. <laughs> H. Rap Brown. Oh wow! So H. Rap Brown, um, head of um, SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, uh, comes to Jacksonville in the late '60s. Uh, he's speaking at Durkee Field. Uh, and his particular message at the time uh, was that um, black people needed to needed to become gun owners. He said, um, "White people have guns. All the police have guns. Black people need to get guns too." Uh, and um, uh, Governor Claude Kirk confronted him at Durkee Field, uh, and. Um, for a minute, um, Brown was uh, was Warren Folks's nemesis. He tried to um, s- he tried to sue him. He tried to sue lots and lots of people, uh, and uh, so it caused caused a pretty big stink. Really, you know, these were two of the things that Warren Folks was most paranoid about: race and um, guns. You know, <laughs> and here's H. Rap Brown coming to town and saying both. black people need to get guns. <laughs> so, it's your time. My time. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ernest Miller, no relation? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Miller, yeah, he, he has popped up in so many projects that, that I've done. He was a psychiatrist at <clears throat> University Hospital, and uh, he at one point examined Warren Folks and said that he, <laughs> he didn't need a psychiatrist to know this, but that um, Warren Folks had paranoid delusional tendencies. Um, Shocking. It, yeah, it's 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 so interesting. It's so many things. I I wrote a book about um, the phony serial killer Otis Tool. Um, Ernest Miller pops up there. <laughs> um, I, I have a story in my book, um, Murder Capital: um, Eight Stories, eighteen nineties to nineteen eighties, about um, these three um, teenagers who murdered one of their. Uh, grandmothers out at the beach um ernest miller popped up there he 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 makes these little cameos and lots of lots of things that i've researched so why that, jacksonville mm. <laughs> why jacksonville <laughs> why are we so lucky <laughs> it's a fascinating strange town yeah, i think it's, it's, I, it's, he's already talked about the next one the next two I believe. yeah mm. yep so it's your time hightower ja oh near and dear to his <laughs> yeah <laughs> JEA so for so in the, uh, somewhere around the mid 70s uh, Warren Folks starts a group called CARE which stood for Citizens Against Increased Electric Rates uh, and um, the JEA was his was his big enemy for the moment uh, he uh, had rallies in the middle of town he uh, Preston Haskell was uh, chair of the JEA yeah. at the time he burnt effigies of Preston Haskell outside um, JEA headquarters. Um, and uh, then he moved on to something else. It was his, it was his, um, his culture war campaign for, for a minute. Uh, Senator Arnett, the late Senator mm. Arnett Gerardo and uh, the allegations of computer fraud. <laughs> Election interference. Yeah. 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 Um, so where have we heard that before? I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of this no, no. stuff is uh, sounds uh, election rigging. rigging. Election, election uh-huh. rigging. So, uh, so folks runs against Arnett Gerardo, um, 1988 for the state senate. Yeah, for state senate, right? And um, 
obviously Gerardo won in uh, a landslide, but I don't remember the, the the total number, but the total number of votes that Warren Folks got was actually kind of fri- I mean, it was a very small percentage, but the fact that there are this many thousand people who would vote for Warren Folks is, is pretty frightening. Um, and uh, so Gerardo and Folks both came to different conclusions about what the election meant. <laughs> Gerardo's conclusion was, you know, um, there's there there's if if Folks can even though the percentage was tiny. If he can get this many people voting for him, as outlandish a figure as Warren Folks, something is still really wrong. Uh, Warren Folks's conclusion w- from the election was that it was rigged and that it was what he called computer fraud. So uh, Folks showed up at the Capitol um, to take his seat in the Senate. Um, didn't get indoors, <laughs> but um, but picketed outside during the legislative session, um, saying that the uh, the election had been stolen. Judge Marion Gooding, <laughs> uh, Marion Gooding, who's probably most remembered now for being the person who told Elvis not to not to swivel his hips when he came to town, right? right. Um, he. Uh, <sighs> Marion Gooding gave Warren Folks so many chances to get out of uh, things like contempt of court uh, when, uh, for example, um, uh, Folks was a big George Wallace for president supporter, and um, eventually um, the George Wallace campaign decided they didn't want Warren Folks representing them anymore. Uh, there was an official Wallace for President group in Jacksonville, and then there was Warren Folks's group. And Warren Folks uh, kept referring to his group as, you know, as the, the official group and kept putting up signage, uh, et cetera. And Gooding kept telling him, you, you have to take the signage down um, or you'll be held in contempt. And he wouldn't take it down or he would cover up one word in the signage, some bizarre things like this kept on going back to to Gooding's courtroom again and again and again. And Gooding basically said, look, I'm trying to give you an out here if you'll just take it. Uh, And um, so I, I would love to be able to ask (laughs) <laughs> Judge Gooding, <laughs> what, what, you know, uh, why did you give Warren folks so many chances? You, a lot of times it seemed like judges just wanted them out of their hair, <laughs> yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Yeah. How about kidnapping his daughters? Oh, so um, I've kind of danced around that one talking with you guys when he was living in Orlando. Uh, and his, uh, his wife divorced him and... Uh, was going to move up to, well, she ended up moving up to Lake City with, um, with their daughters. Um, he, uh, he kidnapped them and um, held the police off with a shotgun. Good God. And um, eventually, uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm giving away so many spoilers. I well, hope, so. I hope, no, no, well, I hope, hope somebody who, you've who done hears enough. this No, no, will, no, that's it. That, for that yeah. reason, you want to read the book. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That's... But but I can't help I can't help giving this this one away that um, the ruse to actually get inside um, Folks's house and um, and arrest him uh, was that they ordered donuts and coffee and uh, and uh, so yeah, I'm sure I'm, sh- I'm sure there's a, a cop and donuts joke in there somewhere that I haven't <laughs> if, quite figured out. But if, if Tim, thank you so much for being yeah. with us. And that, uh, I, it's been it's been a blast. Thank you, you. If Thanks you for can't me. tell. This is a rich and exhausting read. Exhausting, <laughs> and it's and it's worth it. I mean, the Thank the you. research that you have done for this book is outstanding. Thank and, you. Uh, we appreciate you writing it. Appreciate you being here. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Thanks very, very much for being here. And our thanks once again to the Jacksonville Historical Society and Alan Bliss and their donors for keeping us on the air. We'll be back again with you next week. We hope you're enjoying the show. Please check us out on our website, which is mikesonmike.com, or we have a Facebook page as well. We're trying to get as as up-to-date as we possibly can, obviously. Uh, and let us know what you think. And if uh, if you write something that's truly outrageous, we'll read it here on the air, and you'll hear it Ooh. on the next show. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, maybe. Maybe, Thank you maybe all we again. get something from the ghost of Warren Folks. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Sounds like a column. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you all for being with us. Stay safe and have Thank a good you all. Day. Thank Bye-bye. you all. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it was a blast. Mike. Mike's on Mike with Mike Hightower, Mike Tolbert, and Mike Miller can be found at your favorite podcasting platform, Mike, Facebook, Mike, and YouTube. Mike, Mike, Learn more at mikesonmike.com. Join us next time for more conversations with Mike's on Mike.